So my Kubernetes Zero to Interview Hero series is helping you with learning the Kubernetes concepts and also learning hands-on YAML files. And the YAML file series is helping you with learning to implement the YAML files for different scenarios. So now what? As a DevOps engineer, do you think your job is done? Then no. Now comes another difficult part of a DevOps journey, the failures. So doing a root cause analysis, finding the failures and their fixes is another challenge for a DevOps engineer. So in this video, I'm going to help you learn solving Kubernetes real world failures. So hello everyone, welcome back to Tech World with Sahana. Today I'm back with a video where we learn 10 Kubernetes YAML failures and their fixes. So let's get started. One of the most asked Kubernetes interview question. Your application pod keep going into crash loop back off. How would you troubleshoot it? Step 1. You would check the pod status with kubectl get pods. It will show you the pod which is in crash loop back off. In our case, it's Node.js. Copy that name. Step 2. kubectl describe pod, pod name. It will show you complete description. At the end, you can see the step at which it failed. In our case, it pulled the image. After that, it failed during the restart. Now, step number three. View pod logs. kubectl log pod name. You will get the exact error. In our case, it's missing environment variable error db host. Step number four. You will go into your pod YAML and add the environment variable that was missing. Step number five, just apply the pod YAML with kubectl apply hyphen f pod YAML name. The second most asked question in a DevOps interview is a pod fails with image pull back off. What could be the reason and how would you solve them? Step number one, check pod status with kubectl get pods and you will get the pod name which is failing. Copy that name. Step number two, describe the pod for more detail and it shows you the exact step at which it started failing. Now the most common cause for these type of error is that the image tag itself doesn't exist in registry. So you can use any other available images or run the CI again. In your DevOps interview, you are asked that you applied a Kubernetes YAML, but there's no pod that got created. How would you troubleshoot this? Let's take a real world scenario. You applied a Kubernetes file with kubectl apply command, but no pod got created, even though it shows configured or created. This is how you troubleshoot this step by step. Step number one, open your YAML file and check the kind part. It should be pod and there should be no spelling mistake. Step number two, check API version and spec. All the details should be correct for creating your pod. Step number three, check with kubectl get all command. This shows you all the resources that you created with these YAML files are created or not, like deployment, services, pods, everything. Step number four, run a dry run command. This will show you any formatting mistake before reapplying it. In your DevOps interview, you are asked that you run this command, kubectl apply pod YAML, and you got this particular error. What went wrong? So you are deploying a pod, but your kubectl apply instantly fails with parsing error without even hitting the cluster. That means the issue lies with your YAML file and not with Kubernetes. Here are four things that you would check. One, indentation error. Two, invalid syntax. Number three, wrong data type. Number four, run a YAML linter. So this parsing issue actually means that Kubernetes never saw your YAML file. This file was broken from the start. In your DevOps interview, you are asked, you deployed your pod, but it got stuck in the pending state. What would you do to troubleshoot it? So you deployed your pod. When you check with kubectl get pods, you see the status is pending. No containers, no errors, no logs. Now the question is, what's blocking the pod from getting scheduled? Here's your step-by-step -step instruction. Step number one, use kubectl describe pod command. This will show you the events due to which the pod is not getting scheduled. Step number two, 
check for resource issues like for CPU or memory. And if you find any errors related to memory or CPU, update them in your pod YAML. Step number three, check for taints, affinity or node selector. Maybe you have made such a rule for your pod to get scheduled on a node that your pod is not getting scheduled at all. So the pod is usually in a pending state because it is unable to find a suitable node to run on. A Python application pod is OOM killed repeatedly. What's the root cause and fix? OOM killed stands for out of memory killed, which means the container has used more memory than the Kubernetes has allocated to it. And here's how you would fix it. First, we will check the reason why this pod was killed. So we use this command kubectl describe pod with the pod name, where we can see that it was terminated due to out of memory kill and the exit code is 137. Then we use the command kubectl top pod with the pod name. This command shows the current CPU and memory usage of the pod. We can see that the pod is using a CPU of 75M and a memory of 540MI. Now let's check in the deployment YAML where these are defined to see how much memory limit has been set. We can see that the memory limit given is 512 MI. So we change it from 512 MI to 768 MI. Save it and redeploy it with kubectl apply dash f deployment YAML. After redeploying, we check again if we are getting the out of memory error. This time there's no output, which means it's no longer getting killed due to out of memory. Debugging under one minute. A pod restarts frequently, but no logs are visible. How do you debug this container? So a frequent pod restarts with no logs usually means the application fails before it can produce any output. First, check the pod status with kubectl get pod to confirm the restart count is increasing. Here the restart is 6 and the status is crash loop back off. Next, we can describe the pod using kubectl describe pod pod name and look for clues in the event section. Since the logs might be empty for the current run, use kubectl logs double dash previous and the pod name to get the logs from the last failed run. If you see an error like database not reachable, the next step is to check if the database service exists and is running in the cluster. If the database service is up, then at this point, hand over to the database team to check the connectivity, authentication or DB availability from their side. Once the DB team resolves the issue, redeploy and verify the pod run without restart. Debugging under one minute. Your container exits immediately with code 1. How do you find and fix the failure? So an exit code 1 means the application in the container terminated with the general error. So first we will check the pod status with kubectl get pod and the pod name to confirm if it's an error or the crash loop back off state. Next we will run kubectl describe pod pod name and look at the event section for any messages related to container exit. Then we will use kubectl logs double dash previous and the pod name to capture the logs from the container's last failed run. This usually shows the exact error such as configuration file not found or suppose invalid environment variable value. In this case, the issue was with missing variable. Then we can update the config map adding the missing environment variables. Then we can redeploy with the updated configuration with kubectl apply dash f deployment yaml and also verify the container with kubectl get pod pod name to check if it's still running. Debugging under one minute. Your deployment was created but no pod started. The yaml looks fine, what could be missing? So if a deployment is created but no pods are running, it often means Kubernetes cannot schedule the pods. So first we will run kubectl get deployment to confirm the deployment exists. Then check with kubectl get pods to see if any pods were created. If none of the pods are listed or all the pods are in pending state, we will then describe the deployment with kubectl describe deployment deployment name and look at the event section. If the event shows something like failed to pull image or image pull secret not found, then the deployment YAML might be fine structurally but is missing the required image pull secret for the private registry. 
So then we need to create the image pull secret using kubectl create secret command. So the first line that we have is kubectl create secret docker registry and then the name. This creates the Kubernetes secret of this name for Docker registry credentials. The next line that we have, this specifies the registry server address. The next two lines sets the username and password for the registry login. And this last line adds the email associated with the registry account. Then we will link it to the deployment under image pull secret. For that, we will edit the deployment YAML and add the missing image pull secret. And then we will redeploy with kubectl apply dash f deployment YAML. Once the secret is in place, Kubernetes will pull the image, create the pod and start the container. Debugging under one minute. A pod is created, but init containers are skipped. What YAML mistake might cause this? So init containers always runs before main containers to prepare the environment. If a YAML structure is wrong, Kubernetes may ignore the init containers. A common mistake that we do is placing the init containers inside containers instead of at the same level as containers in the pod spec. So first, we will describe the pod with kubectl describe pod pod name to confirm the status of init containers. If you see that init containers never started and are not listed in the events, check the pod YAML under spec. To fix this, make sure the init containers is defined before the containers. Once you make these corrections in the YAML, redeploy the corrected YAML and now the init containers would run before containers. So that is it for today's chapter. Hope this was helpful. Drop comments, any questions you have and see you in the next one.